All right, we got one more class left, and it's a class you're familiar with, even if you haven't heard of the name before. So class Cestoda. Class Cestoda are all of our tapeworms. And you might be familiar with this because humans do get tapeworms. The tapeworms that infect humans are not the only tapeworms out there. There's a lot of different species of tapeworms that infect all sorts of different organisms, mainly mammals, but there are some that are not infecting mammals. And so we will talk about the human tapeworm not to freak you out, but just to make sure you're staying safe with the food you're eating. So before we talk about how kind of a tapeworm gets in the humans and how all that works, I want to point out two major features found in a tapeworm. And I encourage you to sketch it out in your notes. So a tapeworm is more or less an egg making factory. Um, most of the body of a tapeworm is all in making eggs. So here is the scolex, and I'm kind of outlining it. The scolex is the head region, and if you take a look at the scolex, it looks creepy and scary and gross. And this is what's latching onto you. So in humans, and really in most of the organisms that a tapeworm infects, the scolex is what's attaching to the intestinal wall, usually the small intestine. The small intestine is where a bulk of our nutrient um, take up is happening. So our stomach digests the food and then all of that liquidy food stuff goes through your small intestines and your small intestines are taking out the needed nutrients and minerals from our food. Sure, our small intestine needs it. Sure, our body needs it. And so do tapeworms. And so what tapeworms do is they latch on to our small intestine and take those nutrients away from the small intestine. Small intestine will pick up that calcium and then the tapeworm's like, hmm, some calcium, and then takes it. Uh, so it's getting its nutrients from our food. Um, and this is why it leads to undernourishment in people who have tapeworms, because the nutrients that they have been ingesting aren't going to the human, they're going to the tapeworm. So the scolex is the attachment point onto the small intestine. Then the rest of the body of the tapeworm is free floating in your small intestines. It is just the scolex that attaches to the intestinal wall. Everything else is just hanging out in your intestines and your intestines are tens and tens of feet long and tapeworms can get that long too. The rest of the tapeworm are made up of these segments, and I'm going to outline a couple of them. These segments are called proglottids. So every single one of these, oh goodness, every single one of these segments is called a proglottid. And what's inside these proglottids? Eggs. Tons and tons of eggs. Just pure, pure eggs. That's all they are. If we were to imagine, so here is the, the scolex of a tapeworm, and I'm just drawing it all flattened out all the way to the end. The proglottids at the very end are the most mature. These are the most ready to be fertilized. These are the ones that are ready to go. They are ready to interact with the world and make some babies. Whereas um, the way the, the tapeworm grows is it adds to the front. So these are the least mature. So the proglottids right near its head, uh, it's just the beginning stages. Uh, they can't be fertilized. They can't really do much. If they were to emerge from the world right then and there, nothing would happen because they're ju they just aren't grown enough. So the tapeworm grows from its head. It's growing more and more proglottids, whereas the proglottids at the end of the tapeworm are the most mature. They can go out into the world, they can hatch, and make more baby tapeworms. This is important for its life cycle. Now, I know after the plant unit, I said we weren't gonna have any more life cycles. I kind of lied. This life cycle is not that complicated, um, and I think it's really interesting just because it's something that infects us. The picture that's on the side, this is from the CDC, but I'm gonna draw kind of a, I'll say simpler one, but the one that they provide actually is not that bad. So we're gonna start um, with humans. And so we're gonna start with the fact that this human already has a tapeworm. Yay. And that tapeworm is in its intestines. I'm not gonna draw all that, but just bear with me. 
So here's the tapeworm. That tapeworm is being found in the intestines. Now remember, the whole tapeworm body is loose in these intestines. And the most mature eggs are found at the end. Well, if this is happening in our intestines, this tapeworm needs to reproduce. It needs to get its eggs out. So the most mature proglottids, once they've reached a critical point, they break off from the tapeworm. Now it's in your intestines. Where does everything in your intestines eventually go? It's in the small intestine. It goes to the large intestine. And then last but not least, it comes out your butt. So you poop. And when you poop, if you have a tapeworm on you, more than likely there are some proglottids in that poop. So you poop. And again, inside that poop has proglottids. And inside those proglottids, lots and lots of eggs. Now, if you are a civilized person, hopefully you're pooping in a toilet and this next step wouldn't happen. But let's say you're in the woods. Let's say you're in an underdeveloped country. Maybe your toilet stopped working and you have to poop outside. Here's where the next step of our problem comes. So we're going to put the, we're going to put the poop over here and here's some grass. And along comes a pig. A pig. I actually think that's not too bad. Okay. So along comes a pig and a pig is eating the grass, but maybe it's rained. Maybe that feces have been out there for a little bit. And some of those proglottids are probably in the grass or the proglottids open and some of the eggs are in the grass and the pig being a pig doesn't know and probably doesn't care. It's just eating this grass and potentially it eats some of these eggs. So it eats an egg. We'll just, we'll just follow one egg. And when it eats this egg, this egg hatches and it develops into a larvae. But these larvae are microscopic. Uh, you, you can't really see these larvae at all. Now, this particular larvae, it's not going to grow into an adult. Um, it's actually not quite in the right environment. It really needed the pig for it to grow into a larvae. It needed the pH. It needed the temperature. It needed the perfect, beautiful conditions that this pig was supplying. And it needed those conditions to form into a larvae. And these larvae make their way through the bloodstream into, I'm going to draw this, into the muscle of the pig. And when it gets to the muscle of the pig, it forms kind of a cyst. You could almost think of the cyst as a cocoon. So that larvae has now spun this cocoon, this microscopic cocoon, inside the pig muscle. And that's perfect for the larvae. The larvae can't do that in humans. A larvae can't do that in cats or in fish or in birds. It needed to be in a pig for that to happen. But we're still not an adult, right? We need to get it to the adult phase, or at least the parasite obviously wants to get to the adult phase because then it can reproduce more. That's where us as humans comes in. Because what we do is we munch, munch, and eat pigs. And it's actually not just pigs. There's different tapeworm species in cows. So this can happen with cows as well. We eat the muscle of pigs and of cows. And if we eat undercooked muscle, that cyst still exists. The reason we cook meat is because if it has parasites in it, cooking that meat kills that parasite. You don't cook that meat hot enough. You don't cook it well done enough. You don't kill that cyst. And if you don't kill that cyst, the parasite has won. This, uh, so you eat this undercooked, so very specifically undercooked. I don't want you guys worrying about your regularly cooked food. You eat undercooked meat. That cyst ends up going through our stomach. That stomach helps that cyst to emerge. It helps that larvae to emerge. And now it's in the perfect pH, the perfect temperature, the perfect enzymes, the perfect nutrients. And it can continue in its life cycle growing into an adult. It's already in your digestive system. You just ate it. And as it starts maturing into adult, it gets into your small intestine and it bites and it attaches with its scolex. And we start this process all over again. And honestly, the biggest way to prevent it is just cook your meat all the way. Honestly, this is one of the reasons why I don't really eat red meat. 
uh, or pigs or anything because I'm terrified, not just of tapeworms, there's tons of different parasites that we can get from red meats. Fun fact for you. Um, so again, um, this is the CDC picture. It's actually not that bad. Um, it describes it pretty well. Um, it actually shows pigs and cows here, and it tells you the species names of those two tapeworms. I do not care about the species name. But remember, again, tapeworms and parasites in general are very specific to their host. We have a cow and human tapeworm, and there's a pig and human tapeworm. They both use humans, but they have a different uh, secondary host. Uh, so kind of cool to understand where it comes from. It's also why it says at restaurants, like you have to get your meat cooked um, a certain way. Uh, and it's a, it's a health issue. Now, again, as long as humans aren't pooping outside, it's not a big deal, but that's, that's not the case around the world, uh, which is why people still get tapeworms uh, around the world. So there you go. Fun facts for you. So that is where we're going to end with phylum platyhelminthes. Remember, we had three different uh, classes in platyhelminthes. We had our two Bellarians. These were the free living ones. Uh, they weren't parasitic, and we saw the cool penis fencing that they did. The second class we learned about was trematodes, or our flukes. These guys were the ones that have a host of a mollusk somewhere in its life cycle, and we learned about the cool mind control. And then finally, class cestoda, our tapeworms. Not just in humans, but actually a lot of different species. And so, you know, be careful of what you eat. Be careful of becoming a zombie. Uh, these flatworms, although they don't seem very terrifying, definitely can be.